Coming up, Congress passed a bill to fund the government and avoid a shutdown. Now President Trump is expected to declare a national emergency to pay for his border wall. In Kentucky, a proposed concealed carry law passed the Senate and now heads to the House. And William Barr is confirmed to be the next United States Attorney General. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning and happy Friday. It is 631. I'm Will Puckett. It is February the 15th, the day after Valentine's Day. So throw out all the candy, go back on your New Year's resolution and get ready, okay? Get ready for tomorrow because we're in a severe weather alert day for what we expect tomorrow morning to be somewhat of a tricky drive. If you're going out of town for the weekend, maybe heading to Lexington for the right. big matchup against Kentucky and Tennessee. Brandon, today, however, warm. Right. And first of all, you're not getting my candy. You're not making me give it up. You already brought those chocolate kisses know, into the newsroom. I had I eight yesterday morning, Brandon. Ooh, look at and you. Then, and then Lauren McCourt brought in fudge and brownies. There's no <laughs> winning around this place. You got that right. We're all suckers for free food. But yes, we are in a WIMT severe weather alert day. And we're giving a little jokes here because it's not for this morning. It's to give you notice for what's coming. Let's take a look at the cameras this morning as we head out the door. The US 119 up on top of Whitesburg Pine Mountain. All quiet this morning. Again, maybe a few stray showers roaming around Buffalo Mountain here in Perry County. Also all quiet this morning. It's for what's coming tonight, later today and tonight that we're concerned about. And you see live pinpoint Doppler radar not a lot of activity right now. 45 in Louisville. You see the blue there off in the distance, but 40s and 50s here in the mountains because a cold front is coming. And once it does, it's going to bring the possibilities for rain later today, rain picking up later today anyway, and temperatures dropping to right below freezing. And that could lead to some wintry weather overnight and travel issues for tomorrow morning. I'll have more on that coming up here in a few minutes. Will? All righty, Brandon. Thank you. Well, here's some good news we can all appreciate this morning. The government shutdown has been averted, but a new challenge is forming in Washington. CBS's Mark Liverman has the reaction to President Trump's plan for a national emergency. President Trump is planning to declare a national emergency today, arguing the situation at the southern border is a humanitarian crisis. The yeas are 83. Nays are 16. Yesterday, Congress overwhelmingly approved a spending package to fund the government and avoid another partial government shutdown. The A's are 300. The nays are 128. Included in it is $1.4 billion for border fencing, far short of the $5.7 billion President Trump wanted for a wall. He's prepared to sign the bill. He will also be issuing a national emergency declaration at the same time. Declaring a national emergency would give the president the authority to redirect funds from other projects without congressional approval. Taking from far less really from far less important areas. Democrats are expected to challenge the order. We will not have an end run around the Congress of the United States. President Trump himself has argued against it. In a 2014 tweet, he said President Obama was subverting the Constitution because he is unable to negotiate with Congress. What if it's a President Bernie Sanders and he declares climate change? The primary concern Republicans have, the precedent it sets for a future Democratic president. If it's a President yeah. Bernie Sanders, then we're going to have a lot more problems than this. In the latest CBS News poll, two-thirds of Americans said President Trump should not declare a national emergency. Mark Liverman, CBS News. Now, Democratic leaders did not specify how they'll challenge the national emergency declaration, but it is expected to be immediately contested in federal court. Now, Representative Hal Rogers voted in favor of that federal funding deal. Speaking on the House floor last night, he said he was proud of his colleagues for putting the package together and reaffirmed his support for border security. We have a crisis at our southern border, period. There's no denying that our nation's security is threatened by the seemingly unending flow of drugs that find their way into nearly every American community, as well as the violence of the brutal cartels who profit from this trade. Where does it take place? On that border. 
Now, Representative Rogers says the funding bill also includes money for improving infrastructure in rural Appalachia. Well, Senate Bill 150 passed the Senate Thursday and now heads to the House for a vote. The bill would allow constitutional carry in the state of Kentucky. That means you would no longer be required to have a permit to carry a firearm in a concealed manner. Currently, Kentuckians who are legally allowed to own a gun and are over 21 are allowed to open carry without a permit. Firearms instructors who agree with the freedoms this bill would provide still say taking concealed carry classes can help you stay out of trouble with the law. People have the right to defend themselves to their firearms, but they also have to do it in a responsible manner. That's the big key with taking this concealed carry classes is that it teaches someone how to carry in a you know, responsible manner. Senate Bill 150 is sponsored by Senator Brandon Smith from Hazard. Critics of the bill say concealed carry training classes should be required for gun owners who want to carry concealed weapons. Well, the Senate has confirmed William Barr as the next attorney general by a vote of 54 to 45. During his recent confirmation hearings, Barr said distancing himself from Washington has made him more independent. Democrats are not convinced, however, they worry about his noted support of strong executive authority. Many are afraid that will lead him to redact important parts of Mueller, Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. Barr has promised to release as much of the report as he can, though what is unallowable is likely to be a highly subjective decision. Well, for the first time, we are hearing from the wife of an Ox County man killed trying to simply leave a convenience store. Gary Medlin was shot nearly a month ago. He was trying to leave the A&B quick stop during an armed robbery. Matthew Rand talked to his wife, who says she is still trying to pick up the pieces after losing her husband and her father and her children's father. It doesn't seem real. Mindy Medlin thumbs through snapshots of happier times. She says the day she married her husband, Gary Medlin, in 2015 was the best day of her life. He's the love of my life, so it was like we were made for each other. It was nearly a month ago that police say this man, Philip Lee Lewis, held up the A&B Quick Stop on U.S. 25 East. Gary Medlin was inside the store and was fatally shot, making a run for the door. He was just trying to get away. Why did I have to come to this? I just don't understand. Federal agents caught up with Lewis in Flint, Michigan, following a three-week manhunt. Why the Michigan native was in southeastern Kentucky in the first place remains unclear. It gives me a, a sense of relief to know that he's not still on the run. But to me, there's just no amount of justice that'll be enough. It's a painful and confusing time for Medlin's two boys, two-year-old Jackson and eight-year-old Bentley, left to grow up without their father. He'll miss the first day of school, graduations, getting their driver's license. There's just so much he's going to miss out on. This is so not fair. Mindy Medlin says her husband worked hard to take care of his family and was an innocent man caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was a one-of-a-kind person. There, there won't ever be another. He had a heart of gold. Reporting in Knox County, Matthew Rand, WKYT. Now, state police still cannot say when Lewis will be extradited from Michigan to face murder and robbery charges here in the Commonwealth. A man who tried to take off in a Chapmanville police cruiser Thursday evening did not make it too far. Freddie Abbott was pulled over for suspicion of DUI. Police say Abbott was arrested and put in the back of the cruiser. They say when the officer went to search the vehicle, Abbott climbed over the seat and tried to take off on State Route 10. Abbott made it across the street to the Rite Aid parking lot and slammed into three vehicles. A sheriff's deputy pulled up behind the suspect, trying to pin him in. And then Abbott backed into that cruiser. He faces several charges. Well, a Bell County inmate escaped during work detail Wednesday afternoon. The Bell County detention staff say Rocky Howerton had been working a work detail on a Little League facility on Wednesday in Middlesboro. Supervisors say as they were heading back to the jail when Howerton jumped out of the vehicle at an intersection on Highway 441. I'm sure we'll catch him in the next little bit, you know, because he's a hometown boy. If anyone knows where Howerton is, they are asked to call 911. 
Well, it's 640 on this Friday. Let's toss it over to Brandon for a look at your weather. A few little showers trying to show up. Maybe just some light mist this morning across parts of the area, but take the umbrellas. You'll need them later on today. Nothing major going on right now. Even trying to show some of the clouds clearing down to the south, at least a little bit anyway. Temperatures very mild this morning, but you can see back off toward Louisville already down to 45. They were at 47 just a few minutes ago, so that cold front starting to drop into the mountains, but not yet here for us here in eastern Kentucky, southwest Virginia, southern West Virginia, and east Tennessee. Winds cranking, though. They're starting to see those, see those directional shifts there, so it's trying to get the air together in front of that cold front. And you can see those temperatures behind it getting much colder. So your out the door forecast, we are going to see the possibility for rain chances increasing through the day. And it's tonight what we're in the severe weather alert day for the possibility from anything from winter mix to snow to even some freezing rain. Will. Alrighty, Brandon, we will have stories trending on WIMT.com next. Thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. Nearly 30 students were sent to the hospital yesterday after eating Valentine's Day candy and treats. And an Australian couple has managed to grow a cabbage almost as big as a person.